Sisters, we are extremely delighted and grateful that we can continue this great work of unveiling um, the very good that is already within us, according to the scriptures. God created us very good, very good. He pronounced goodness over our lives. Isn't that wonderful that we are aware of this fact that we were created very good, very good, wonderfully made, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms. So namaste and welcome. I am so grateful that we are going to continue on this great month of um, dubbed, this month of March, dubbed Women's History Month, Women's History Month. As we always share with you, there is a reason why um, the world has come to understand, um, to make way for um, her story to be told, for um, the story of the divine feminine, which is the female um, aspect of God, the special half of God. As we all know, God created us male and female. So as we continue in this month, as we welcome um, more of our sisters who are joining us. We want to look today at, um, at victims and victors of the fall. Victims and victors of the fall. And somebody will ask, what do you mean by that? And we pray the Holy Spirit will clarify for us today as we go through again the Lenten season, uh, which we are understanding more about the Lenten season. It's not um, a time to broadcast um, your fast or to broadcast what you're doing. It's a time um, which is not even seasonal. It's a time that we use to jumpstart a lifestyle. Um, we use it as a catalyst to enter into a divine aligning lifestyle with our creator. So the Lenten season, yes, it's a good it's a good start for many of us, a good opportunity for all of us to recommit ourselves to discover the healthy, heavenly lifestyle, the blessed lifestyle that our Creator, God, our Heavenly Father, as the Bible says, actually our Heavenly Parent, God who is not a man nor a woman, but God who is spirit, who is composed of the divine masculine and divine feminine aspect working in oneness in harmony hence he created us male and female so as we come today i pray you get your bibles we will be looking at the scriptures in genesis and um, from genesis chapter 3 um we are we have been requested or not requested sequestered is the right word by the holy spirit to continue to unveil um, um, beautiful truths that will help us love one another as family beyond the religiosity of we and them. You know, those people over there, we got to go convert them. They too are thinking we have to go convert you. But somehow we are not practicing love. So to begin this, I have my sister um, Shade Foshola who has gotten a Bible. I would like us to look as we welcome also Princess Nanji. We would look at the book of Genesis. Genesis is a book we encourage anyone who is going to be part of um, facilitating, if you use the word leader, always remember that God is the leader. The Holy Spirit is the leader. We are just facilitators. So for anyone who will be facilitating to help others um, come closer to God, have a relationship with God, we say the word believe in God, actually come to know God is the Better things to align with God's heart, God's will, God's purpose. So anyone who is going to help facilitate such um, relationship with God and one another, the Genesis narrative is so important. You cannot really understand Jesus very well unless you really understand Genesis. And you cannot understand God very well, again, unless you understand your beginning, our beginning. And so as Christians, Judeo-Christians, we use the Bible again. The Bible is one of many scriptures. We have to keep emphasizing this so we don't get caught 
in a dogmatic quad mare. Um, in the beginning was the word, the word, not the Bible, not the scriptures. In the beginning was the word, the word, the word I'm speaking, the words you're going to hear from one another, the words that are being echoed everywhere in the world on the news, actors using it, celebrities, singers, the word, the word. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was not the Bible. Very important. Once you get through, once the Holy Spirit helps everyone to, especially we who are so-called Judeo-Christians, um, we need to be careful not to say the Bible is the word of God only. No, it is of the word, words that have been compiled over time to help us understand who we are, whose we are, and how to relate to our creator and one another. So Genesis, Genesis. Sister, if you turn to Genesis chapter 3, I would love you to read for us. Um, I'm just so grateful in this month where we highlight our divine feminine that I have great sisters, great, great flowers in this um, great garden we call Heavenly Oasis platform um, to share with us. So Genesis chapter 3 verses 9. If you would just read to the world what you see um, in that narrative, beloved. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Amen. Let's just pause on that. Oh my goodness. Oh, think about this. Just simmer down. And everyone, and because this is broadcast live, we, we're grateful for those who would receive today the blessing from God calling out to Adam and Eve, calling out especially to Adam. Yes, Adam, why? Because we know in a way the Bible tells us, Adam, the man, you are kind of responsible. You say you are the head of the household as Christ is the head of the church. Okay, so you, Adam, you are, quote unquote, you claim you're in charge. Now God has come on the scene. God has always been on the scene. There's so many questions that are going to come out of this that we may not address all today because we can't. Number one is, why would God, God who many claim knows everything, knows everything, knows what's going on, everything. Suddenly now, this is the beginning of time. Adam, his creature that he has created, his replica, is now somehow God cannot find Adam in the Garden of Eden. How big was this garden? How small? Is this garden um, just a small land, a garden somewhere? Are we not, uh, do we know the truth about this garden? Or is this garden the whole world and Adam has somehow disappeared somewhere playing hide and seek with God and God doesn't know? Please look at that. This is a way we will unveil, says the Holy Spirit, as God calls us through Jesus. Ask, ask the question. So let's continue to move on to look at that narrative. So God, who is spirit, God who created Adam, now does not know where Adam is. Adam is, what is Adam doing? Is Adam hiding? Well, it seems like, because when we read further down, we would hear Adam's response. Can you read further down for us, beloved sister? And he said, I had thy voice in the garden and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Wow. Something must have happened. Something. Let us look at this narrative because we cannot, the narrative in Genesis does not tell us line by line, like your diary, like your daily diary, even your daily diary, you would look at your daily journal, will not tell you second by second, minute by minute, the things you did. And so the narrative in, 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 in Genesis does not give us the full picture of what's happening. This is a fact. Hence, we need the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. We need the Holy Spirit. So there are so many things I want to tell you. I want to share with you. And, and, and he said the Holy Spirit will make it plain. It will not be more figuratively. No, no, no. It will not be in a parable way anymore. It will be plain. He says, and it will lead you into all truth. But if you don't ask the question, if you think, if we think we know everything already because of hand me down, hand me down theology, then we see that hand me down theology has not produced the loving environment called the Garden of Eden, where God wants to communicate with us, be with us, you know, fellowship with us as the head of the family of God. So Adam is missing. 
God cannot find Adam. Then suddenly Adam, we, the Bible tells us, Adam replies to God, Oh, I heard your voice. I heard your voice, God. I heard the sound of you. And some Bible will say, walking, walking in the garden. And Adam said, I was afraid. Ooh, afraid of what? Is God a monster? Is God this terrible being? No, God is, Jesus makes it clear, a parent, our father, our originator. Suddenly, the first child, you know, yes, yes, that's the first child in reality. That's the first child according to the Bible. The first Adam is now afraid of his father, his mother, his parents. Wow. What has Adam done? You know, as children, we can relate to this a little, not just as children, even as adults, if you still have a pure conscience, you know, sometimes conscience become reprobate. People don't um, um, know how to repent or, or realize what they've done. They think, you know, um, whatever they do is okay, but it's not okay. Something must have happened. Something terrible must have happened that now God cannot fellowship with Adam. God has been coming down. We must know this for fact, that God has been fellowshipping with Adam and Eve over a period of time. Not just what we hear in the Bible, the short time. No, no, it cannot be. So what happened becomes the question that Adam... Your newborn baby, according to the Bible, now cannot recognize you. We must recognize again that Adam was not created as a, as a, according to the Bible, as a small baby from the womb and learn how to crawl. The Bible doesn't tell us that. It doesn't say that. But no doubt we know Adam must grow because God gave Adam instructions, commandments. He said he blessed them and he told them to be what? Fruitful. Herein lies why we must really investigate the scriptures about our origin. Because if we do not know, according to, not according to, but the truth is, if we do not know the hist our history, if we do not know the past, if we do not know how, where we are from, uh, in a way we're going to keep repeating mistakes that do not get us to do the right thing. So what happened, sisters and brothers? The Bible, according to theologians over the years, have told us that, you know, number one, the mainline theology that is being put forward in, the, in, 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 in light of um, those who go out to evangelize from the European perspective, the theology we receive or interpretation of this is that somehow, um, no, no, the first theology we receive interpretation is that God knows everything and that you know, um, 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 in a way, uh, um, because God knows everything, uh, um, um, right now, God doesn't know anything about Adam. That is that is strange. If God knows everything, that even Jesus coming to die, God knew about it. God, it's, it's like a plan. It's God's plan. People will quote from the foundation of the earth. You know, God God already prepared Jesus to come and die. And, and it's, that is, that is, that, that, that what type of God is that, you know, that wants us to go through all this, that wants Adam to hide. And then the second part of that theology says that, that because um, 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 Adam ate an uh, apple or fruit, ate something that God told them not to eat, that's why now um, he's blind, you know, God cannot see Adam. You know, people make up and try to tie it, and it's like, ah, this thing doesn't make sense. You don't eat a fruit. I never eat a fruit. And suddenly now, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I forget my mother's name. I don't know when my mother or my parents is calling me because I, I ate a fruit. And we know it's not what a man eats or a woman eats or what we eat, as Jesus tells us clearly, that defiles a person. No, that is not what made you fall. That's not what made you not know God because you ate some, some, some fruit. The Western world put forward apple, and it, you know, again, it's so, it's so, it's so stupid. Sorry to use that word, stupid, because the Bible tells us God prepared fig leaves for them. So when we look at it, there was no apple in that area, even if there was. But God prepared fig, so maybe they ate a fig, but we know that's not the truth. They didn't eat nothing, no fruit that made them. Now they cannot see God. 
that suddenly you eat fig or you eat some some fruit you you, you know god cannot see you we begin to understand that it is clear that the word know to know knowledge the bible says adam knew his wife and she begat in the book of proverbs chapter 30 verse 20 we hear of um, an adulteress who wipes her mouth after she's eating wow do you wipe your does an adultery somebody who commits adultery is it their mouth their wife no it's again figuratively telling us something happened they say the fall of mankind the fall we use the word the fall as if man was standing straight and then now he's falling as a tree fall the fall of man something that was erect something that was proper we can say the brokenness of god's the broken relationship how our relationship got severed our divine connection got severed so it must be beyond eating some literal fruit in the so-called garden of eden that now in this narrative we are looking at god is asking where are you adam and adam his first son is replying i was afraid why are you afraid we can connect that point by saying he has disobeyed something he has gone against god's instruction that's a fact number one that's what we all do especially as children when we've not developed a reprobate mind we hide we we, we hide from our parents oh daddy has come home mommy is now i'm gonna tell on you I, oh my god and i'll be begging hiding don't my sisters please do not tell do not i'll be hiding where's bio oh bio is nowhere to be found wow so something happened that severed our relationship from God. And so today I ask the question to help us to open up a little bit, to bring this to our, our own life, because the narrative we read about and are studying and are getting Rema word about apocalypse unveiling is not the full truth. It's not everything. It is half truths that we need to look into and bring it to our own life. Because this story is not just about somebody in the past. It's about I and you present. Are you hiding? Are you falling? Or are you standing before God? Becomes the question for us today. Are you hiding? Are you stand? Are you falling, or are you standing in love? Which one is it? Are you hiding from God? You know, many persons still are in a way. They feel, oh, even those who claim they believe in God, they still hide. Oh no, I am, I am, I am so unholy. I, you know, I cannot. You know, no, not me, not me. God, you know, and God is saying, wait a minute, I need a relationship with you. Uh, I created you. I created you very good according to the Genesis narrative. Not, not evil. I didn't create sin in you. I created you. The Bible says very good. Adam, why are you hiding? And still today, you are still hiding. You still somehow feel um, that you are not worthy. And many people tell you that, yes. Even the so-called church, we preach it so vehemently, yes. Oh, you are a sinner, you are a sinner, you are terrible, you are that, that. We beat one another up in the head. Yes, we do, we do, we do, we do. And so many people still hide. Because if I go to church, all they're going to talk about is, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. And they're hiding. And then there are others who will claim that they love God. And they claim they're falling in love with God. They fall, they fall. You know, we use that word, my dear sisters. Um... You know, people get weak in the knees. You know, I want to tell you the origin of that word, falling in love. Uh, you know, when, when, when you get weak in the knees, it happens. You fall. When you really love somebody, when somebody really loves you, oh, my God, it's like you lose your senses. You become helpless. But the question is this. We must ask my sisters, pastors here, to help the Holy Spirit channel these this answers about are we hiding 
falling or standing. So the answer is this, in a way, we have to fall in love first. You say, how does that happen? Yes, you must fall in love. But when you fall in love, God did not design us to be helpless, like somebody uh, helplessly in love. What does that mean? How can you be helplessly in love? Well, we understand when you first fall in love, what happens? Especially from a man's perspective, let me tell this for my sisters so that they know their strength. You know, it is the man who falls in love. Yes. When he falls in love, you say, how is it true? Well, it is this way, very clear. We do it all the time. Number one, man has recognized you are the better half. That is something that is in plain sight. I don't need to look in the Bible or somebody say, you know, where is it? No, it is very clear. We know it instinctively. That's why it is coined the better half. So who falls in love? The man many times does what Sister Shade, Sister Margaret gets down on his knees. He gets down on his knees. He falls in love. He gets down on his knees and proposes to the one he feels or believes that God, without this one, I am not complete. Without this one, I cannot move life forward. I cannot fulfill the blessedness, the responsibilities I have. So he falls down on his knees. But guess what? Guess what happens? The woman, once she accepts, yes, now lifts him up. And now he stands. He stands in love with her, with God in the midst. So let us put this forward clearly to one another. Yes, it's okay to fall in love, but God does not call us to be helplessly in love. That cannot be God because love is strength. Love is what? Strength. Because love does what? Oh, the book of love tells us in Corinthians, love conquers. Love conquers. So love is not this, you know, I'm helplessly in love. No. Yes, you must. I must surrender to God. That is where the standing will begin. Just like you surrender to the woman, to your spouse. Just like she too, if she has good sense, she does. She surrenders. She falls in love because now she finds a man who really wants to care for her, who is going to be her protector, that's her physically, who is going to be there to uplift her up, who will say his story, his story will tell her story, lift her up. So yes, she too, she stands together. They become one. But Adam, where are you? Are you still hiding? You fall. You're helpless. No, yes, you are helpless. You're afraid. Anyone who is afraid is helpless. You're helpless. You need a helper. You need someone. But God gave you a helper. The Bible says she was your helpmate. For some reason, two of you did not cooperate well, listen to each other, to God within each other. And now you're by yourself, hiding. Where's Eve? Why does the narrative tell us, Adam, by yourself? You're afraid. You're helpless. Something has happened to make you feel that way. You do no longer trust God. God who, if you are a baby, you no longer trust your parent. The one who didn't ask you for money to feed you from day one. No longer you trust. It happens in our life. It's happening in all our lives everywhere. Our children as they grow up somehow. Huh? Mm, you can't find them. <laughs> you can't find them. I'm talking about real truth. Not physically you can't find them. The same child you taught that, you know, you are one with, you are, you, are, you are pumping all the love into. Somehow they grow up, you can't find that same child. They are afraid. Some are afraid of their parents. Yes, parents and children don't have great relationships anymore as we used to, or we thought we used to, because if we did have good relationship, the world will not become dysfunctional. So we didn't really have good relationship from Jump Street. It is evident in this Adam story here in Genesis. But I want us to be encouraged, brothers and sisters. This is why the second Adam came, amen. <laughs> this is why, to clarify our relationship with God, that God, 
is looking for victors, not just victims. Yes, Adams, rise up and be a victor. What is a victor? One who takes responsibility. One who says, yes, I am here, God. I did wrong. I am sorry. One who is willing to repent. Can, you, can we be victors today? Yes, we can. Are we willing to tell the truth about ourselves? Not about somebody else. Not about the other. Ourselves. God is looking for victors. Men and women who can be victorious in this world now by following the process that God has put in place through Jesus, Yeshua, the Christ. First, he says, repent, repent, repent. Am I repenting enough? Or do I repent one time and think it is it? Do I fast one day or three days, seven days or for 40 days and say that is it for my life? And then I go back to the same things. Because somehow we, we, we've watered down God. to say God is a forgiving God. So do what I do whatever. Then I say, oh, God, please forgive me, forgive me. And then we talk be um, beautiful jargon like, oh, think positively. Think, what does that mean? You've committed. You don't have a good relationship with God. You don't have a good relationship with your parents. How can you think positively about yourself when you don't have a positive relationship with God? When you are afraid. That's just jargon. So today, the question will still persist in all our hearts. Where are you? Where's your relationship with the heavenly parent, the heavenly maker who made you male and female? Do you know your relationship, my relationship with God cannot be apart from my relationship with you? Yes, you watching this, you with me here, it cannot be, it cannot be. There cannot be any way, Adam, to claim God, I love you without Adam not having a good relationship with Eve. There's no way around it. And so the Bible re-emphasizes this in the, in the episode of John. How can anyone claim they love God and not love their fellow human beings? He says it is impossible. That is not love. You don't love. So am I hiding? Are you hiding young men, young women, elder women, elder men? Are we still hiding? Are you caught up as a victim? Do you women, sisters, in this month still want to play the victim mentality? Or do you want to be a victor? One who is standing with God in love. One who is doing your best to prop up your family. That virtuous woman. Yes, that many men have not found yet. Maybe Adam did not find Eve as a virtuous woman. Maybe that's why they had a problem. Because we know the story how Eve, unfortunately, you know, messed up with... With, with, with the archangel, the so-called babysitter. But brothers and sisters, as I come to the 34th minute of this, our sharing, because I want to keep it at 40, because this is 40 days of Lent, there is an encouragement we need to find and develop through this narrative that may take us to the not so good side. Again, this is the apocalypse of religion. We are unveiling the not so good to get to the very good. The not so good is the truth that Adam, many of us are still living in fear, afraid of God, afraid of love, afraid to commit ourselves one to another, afraid of consistency, afraid of heavenly harmony, afraid of the other who is created in, your, in the same image and likeness of God. But because they have a BS, a belief system that somehow somebody has cajoled us, hoodwinged us to think that somehow they are so different, they are alien from you, no, they are not. And we are afraid of one another. When we are afraid of one another, we are afraid of God. It's just that simple. Because there's no way I'm going to love God and not love my fellow human being. And so if I'm afraid of God, I'm afraid of you. I'm afraid of my fellow human being. And if I'm afraid of my fellow human being, I'm definitely afraid of God. God is looking for victors. Also victims of the fall. But God wants the victors to stand up. Those of us, those of you who are able to really love from cradle through the tomb. Love as God loves us. 
loves us so much, even in our decadence, even in our separation from God. God gave us, God said, no, 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 I love you. I love the world because I gave you value. I created the world very good. And so today, let us know that God is looking for everyone. We don't want victim mentality. Victim mentality is, yes, afraid mentality, hiding mentality. Don't know what to do mentality. Waiting for a hand me out, somebody to hand you something, you know, and uh, waiting to be fed every day. Not, not looking for the hook. Not, not understanding that you can do yourself too. That we must work out our soul salvation the way Adam could not. We must do it as Jesus did, who went to the cross, standing in love, not falling in love, not hiding from love, standing in God. When we stand in love, oh my goodness, when we stand, we do not stand arrogantly, we stand humbly. We stand like Jesus stood humbly. When even though you've done wrong, stand humbly and say, Daddy, Mommy, I'm sorry. Stand and repent. Stand. Don't feel helpless because God wants to redeem you. God wants to redeem the whole world. Not just one of us, not just a few of us, but all of us to stand together as universal brothers and sisters. So God, I want to thank you, Heavenly Parent, for this scripture. This scripture that has so much in it. This verse. This verse that we can write books, 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 libraries, just from this one verse. Father God, I thank you, Mother God, for allowing us not to stay in our fallen state, but to rise up and stand with you as you stand with us, standing on your promises, standing on your heavenly will, knowing that we are truly brothers and sisters. In the matchless name of Yahushua, we call Jesus in the West our Christ, our great anointed brother who is calling us to stand as victors. We pray these blessings over every life to receive and stand. Don't be afraid. No, come standing humbly. God is here and everywhere wanting to embrace you back into the garden as his true son. People of God say amen wherever you are and thank God for what God is doing. As we, we want the world to know where I have to 